Before going deeper into advanced structure mechanics, let us revive our memory about mechanics of solids. Mechanics of solids is a branch of engineering and physics that deals with behavior of solids under various loads. Mechanics of solids is a sub-branch of mechanics just like statics and dynamics. Statics and dynamics in general deals with rigid body. So the body has got no capacity to bend. The body is just an object which transfers the applied load to the support or it is accelerated by the applied loading. In statics, we have a rigid body which is supported at some positions and loads are applied. These loads are transferred to the support. In dynamics, we have again loads applied, but the body is not supported. So the applied loads try to accelerate the body. Unlike statics and dynamics, mechanics of solid is dealing with those bodies or those solids which can deform. In other words, which are flexible, where internal loads can develop under the applied loading. The main idea behind mechanics of solid is to finding out what the internal effects are. There can be different types of internal effects, such as stresses, strains, bending moments, shear forces, torsions, and so on and so forth. Once the internal effects are known, then we can design a structure, we can analyze it, or we can optimize it. Let us quickly run through the key concepts which we have developed in mechanics of solids. So as I said, the first important concept of mechanics of solid is stresses. Stresses are internal resistances to external forces, or in other words, stress is a force per unit area. Stresses can be either axial or shear. So to be more specific, let us consider a body which is supported at some point and is subjected to a variety of loads. We normally cut a body into some portions and then take a particular portion and study its internal forces. Please note, the internal forces includes forces and moments. In mechanics of solid, the cut plane is very important. A cut plane is like a very sharp knife which is used to cut the body. And since we are interested in the internal forces, then we try to find out the internal forces of the body. So in this example, we take the left side of the body and try to analyze the forces appearing on our surface of interest. As we can see that there can be infinite number of forces in different direction on this surface. These forces have been generated because of the Newton third law being applied on the surface. So when we remove part, a portion of a structure, we actually impose the force effect on the surface so that overall structure is in equilibrium. Now these forces can be averaged out into say E average. The surface would have a certain area called as A. Dividing P by A, we get the well-known engineer's stress. Another important concept in mechanics of solid is strain. Strain is a measure of deformation. So imagine if we have got a rod of length L0 and the rod being divided into some segments as shown. So this rod is divided into eight segments. After that, if we apply axial load on it, we will get some deformation. This deformation, when divided by the original length, gives us the strain. The strain is the deformation counterpart of the force in the case of stress. Please note that the segments within the bar can be extended with different deformations. The average of all the deformation is equal to delta. This is similar to the average of forces which we took in the case of load on the surface. The reason why the segments are not deformed equally is 
that maybe at a particular region there might be a stress concentration or there might be a problem with the material in mechanics of solid normally when we consider a material we imagine that the material is continuous and cohesive so there are no cracks in the body and the particles within the material are sticking to each other so there is a homogeneous a molecular structure of the material thus continuity means that there are no apparent cracks or holes or gaps in the structure and cohesiveness means that the molecular arrangement is uniform the third concept which is very important in mechanics of solid is hooke's law hooke's law actually relates the stresses with strains but over here one question might arise in mind that why are we dealing with stresses and strains why not to deal with forces and deformations so in order to answer this question let us assume that we have got two objects and they are of same material and same length however the area of cross section of both the objects is different now if these both objects are thrown into universal testing machine and we apply tension load on them we will see that the force displacement curve of both of them is different we will find that the material one which is having a bigger area has got a bigger k as compared to material 2 which has got a smaller area in order to get one stress strain relation which is independent of the area of cross section of a um, of a structure the most famous law which is stress is equal to e times strain that is called hooke's law so what happens is that if we write f is equal to kx and we multiply divide the left hand side by area a and the right hand side by the length l we get something called modulus of elasticity or young modulus which is ka by l thus we normalize the constant with respect to the area and length this helps us to compare different materials and to get some idea whether a particular material is better for a particular case now following up on the hooke's law we have elastic modulus as defined over here the elastic modulus tells us how stiff or flexible a material is elastic modulus can be same or different in tension or compression for example steel has got similar elastic modulus both in tension and compression however concrete elastic modulus in tension and compression is different another concept important for mechanics of solid is poisson ratio poisson ratio tells us the lateral deformation under the axial load so if we have a axial compressive load then there will be lateral expansion that will be defined by the poisson ratio poisson ratio is the negative ratio of transfer strain to the axial strain and is usually dimensionless number after this we have got shear modulus now in the case of stresses as we discussed that we can have either axial stresses or we can also have shear stresses so these forces they can be in the direction normal to the plane or in the direction parallel to the plane or within the plane so in this context the shear modulus also known as the modulus of rigidity measures a material resistance to shear deformation shear modulus relates shear stresses to shear strain and is used primarily in materials that are subjected to shear loads please remember that steel structures are inherently or anatomically considered to be under the shear effects in case of steel structures the particles or the molecules are round balls which are clogged 
together. When some load is applied on the structure, these balls, they start sliding against one another. On the other hand, concrete, which is a heterogeneous mix of aggregates, water and cement, doesn't show this type of behavior. The failure in concrete can be due to bursting. This is similar to like if one inflate a balloon and inflate it to an extent that it bursts out. The reason we are getting different behavior or different failure in the case of steel and concrete is because of its molecular arrangement. If we place a steel rod within a universal testing machine, we will see that the steel rod yields and give us a stress strain curve which looks like this. In the case of concrete, we have got a nonlinear relation. There is no yield point in the case of concrete. The reason that we have got yielding predominant in steel failure is that the molecules start sliding against one another. So there is a flow of the material. The seventh element which is important to mechanics of solid is elasticity and plasticity. Elasticity and plasticity are function of a stress strain curve. In the case of a stress strain curve of, a, uh, of steel, we have initially an elastic region, then after that a yield region, a yielding region, then a strain hardening region, and finally ultimate stress or necking region. So if we are designing our structure within an elastic region, we can we use theory of elasticity to define the structure or in other words to relate the stresses with strain theory of elasticity is mainly concerned with the hooke's law on the other hand if we are designing our structure within the yielding area region then we will have to use theory of plasticity to define our stresses and strains similar type of stress strain relationship exist in the case of strain hardening and necking region it is important to appreciate that material can exhibit elastic behavior where they return to their original shape after the applied load is removed in the case of plastic behavior or yielding behavior where the material can undergo permanent deformation so within the yielding region the material won't come back to its original position the transition between the elastic region and the yielding region is called yield limit after this the other key concept related to mechanics of solid is deformation modes Solid material can undergo various types of deformation modes such as tension, compression, bending, torsion, each associated with stresses and strain patterns. Under the dynamic effects, we can also have different modes of motion. The other important concept is the failure criteria. In mechanics of solid, failure criteria has got an important role. Failure criteria helps to predict when a material or structure will fail under specific conditions. Common failure criteria are the von Mises and Mohr Coulomb criteria. Von Mises criteria is common to steel structures where Mohr Coulomb is used in the case of concrete structures. Again, the failure criteria is dependent on the type of molecular arrangement within a structure. Von Mises criteria has got a shear components appearing in the failure criteria, whereas in the Mohr Coulomb criteria, there is more cohesion and the friction, the shear, and what is called the hydrostatic failure of a structure. By hydrostatic failure, we mean that when a structure bursts out. So it is, uh, it is very important to appreciate what type of material is being used before applying any failure criteria. All these concepts of stresses, strains, failure criteria helps us in analyzing the structure. We will find in advanced structure mechanics that we can solve problems by using theory of elasticity and we get complex partial differential equations. These equations are very difficult to solve by hand. Based on the key concepts which we have discussed from the concept number one till concept number 10, it might be clear that mechanics of solids is essential for analyzing and designing structure components such as beams, frames, plates. 
shells, etc. Mechanics of solid helps us finding out maximum stresses and strains within a structure based on which they can be designed. Mechanics of solids uses either simple engineer's beam theory or the complex theories of elasticity and plasticity to solve problems. The simple engineer's beam theory can work out simple problems which are common in practice. But sometimes we might come across such sort right of problems which are not conventional. For that, we will have to resort to theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity. In advanced structure mechanics, we will find that a simple problem like a cantilever subject to a concentrated loading or a simply supported beam under uniformly distributed loading end up with complex partial differential equations whose hand solution would be laborious. Therefore, we will use finite element analysis technique to solve the partial differential equations numerically. Finite element analysis is a numerical technique used in solid mechanics to analyze complex structures and systems by dividing them into smaller elements and allowing detailed stress and strain analysis.